One thousand years ago, sword and superstition reigned. It was a time of darkness. It was a world of fear. It was an age without podcasts. Then, one man stood against the tide. Black Nappa 101. He assembled the greatest internet warriors and some random old guy who likes to narrate and formed a podcast to push back the fear. As Black Nappa's reputation spread, peace settled across the internet. But everything changed when the troll nation attacked. Led by the evil queen Jessica, her minions swept across the land, obliterating reason and sanity wherever they found it. Black Nappa resisted, defending the freedom of all sentient beings. There were victories, there were defeats, many died, friend and foe alike. Eventually, he realized that in order to save the podcast he had sworn to protect, Black Nappa would have to become someone else. Something else. And now we stand united, between the light and the dark. We stand as the arms, limbs, and torso of a giant robot, with Black Nappa as our head. We are the Communicast! Sweet Christ, I never get tired of you guys always doing that stupid shit after after the theme song plays. Oh God! Uh, hey everybody, welcome to the welcome to the Communicast. Uh, this is episode one. Uh, a couple of you might be wondering why are we called the Communicast now? Uh, due to issues with uh, a possible iTunes upload schedule, we had to change our name because we are conflicting with a podcast that hasn't updated in like five years, but they're still listed as a podcast. So we had to change our name, but we figured it was a good time at episode 30 slash episode one. So yeah. I'm your host, Black Napa 101. With me are three lovelies, or comrades, now. I gotta get used to that. That's gonna be weird. Three comrades. Uh, comrades, introduce yourselves. I am Comrade Mama Donovan, and I am a good communist. Okay. I am Conrad Grunt OP, the most comradiest and gruntiest of the grunts. Right. I am Professor Comrade. No, Comrade Professor. Um, yes, whichever doesn't get me shot. Um, I am a good citizen. I have nothing to fear because I serve our computer uh, robotic overlords, and I know their reign will be just and merciful. Um, I do. Ha- oh, well, go ahead. Finish. Finish it off. Yeah. And I develop. And I develop games such as Ice Brass Revolution, which the robots have not sought to block yet because it supports them. Yay. I do have to note that we are not a communist podcast, but that's apparently a theme we're going to be fucking around with. So, yeah. And Jonathan is not being a good citizen. I think we should summon the robots on him. Don't worry, your re-education will begin soon. Don't drink the tap water. That is all. (laughs) Yeah. Um... And Ryan's not. Ryan's still here, kind of. He's in the background taking his t- taking his break. Um, I told Ryan he could take the night off, but he's the one who still edits and records, so he's probably hearing hearing us talk all this shit. So yeah, um, just letting you know, Ryan, we love you. Without without you, we aren't we aren't a podcast. So hope you stop being a grumpy Gus. So yeah, everybody say thank you, Ryan. Thank, thank you, Ryan. Ryan. And everybody down below, comment, comment, comment down in the little comment section. Fuck me, I couldn't say that. Couldn't get that out. Um, put a comment down below and say, say, hey, thank you, Ryan, and how much we love him. It'll cheer him up, and he won't stop being a. Gr- he'll stop being a grumpy Gus. So yeah, 
This is episode one of the community cast. Uh, if you listen to our form, if you've ever listened to the whip podcast, it's going to be the same style. We're just going to talk stupid bullshit. Uh, yeah. So I'll let you guys take the hat. I'll let you guys take the wheel and I'll just be here. Go ahead, guys. All right. So this Saturday is extra life. Boom. This is a big event. 24 hours of gaming. Um, national event. It benefits the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. So I'm here in Austin, so I'm going to raise money for Dell Children's. Uh, they're actually going to uh, use it to buy a robot. Yay, robots. Robot overlords. Yay. Don't don't make me into Soylent Green. Um, so the uh, robot is a surgery robot. It's designed to do neurosurgery on young children. So it's very precise. Um, it, it very intricate uh, detail. But neurosurgeons can use that to help... Uh, I believe it deals with epilepsy. Uh, last year, they got a brain scanner to help with epilepsy. Now they're getting a robot that can actually go in and uh, fix some of the problems. It's really cool. Um, I'm going to be at Wonko's. Uh, Wonko's is the is the biggest tabletop event. They're hosting the, the big 24-hour tabletop event here in Austin. Um, we've got a video game event at the Microsoft Store, but I'm more of a tabletop person. So I'm going to be running uh, Ice Brass Revolution for 24 hours. Nothing but one shots for 24 hours. I got the new version six. It's done and ready to go. Um, also with us, we're going to have Steve Jackson games. Uh, we're also going to have uh, Legacy Revelations, another uh, indie developer. They might be stopping by. Um, so it's going to be big. Uh, we've got a lot of people interested. Oh, HavenCon. HavenCon is also sending people our way. This is going to be a lot of fun. I've, I've done this for about three, four years now. Um, started out in Houston been doing it in Austin for a bit. Oh, I, 24 hours of gaming. It's It gets fun when you've been up, say, around the 18-hour mark. That's when really interesting things start coming to your brain. And that's when you need to start writing things down so you can remember all the little horrors. Because then you start realizing that, oh, hey, there's a silence over there. Oh, that, I can see them now. Cool. It's like, oh, I, I'm actually not blinking. Cool. Yeah, anyway. Um, so things get fun when you try 24 hours of gaming. Um, what about the rest of you? What are you all going to do? You must do it. The robots demand it. Um, well, I won't have any sort of streaming equipment, but if I do have to set right off, uh, granted, my work schedule provides it for me. You know, because I'm a hardworking citizen. Ha 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 ha. Yay. <laughs> I'm actually going to be... Um, Actually, I don't really have much to donate for or right now, but what I am going to be doing is just probably disarming nukes all day in a Metal Gear Solid 5, the Phantom Pain. Awesome. Tori? Oh. Yes? What are you going to do? I'm stuck here in San Antonio because I'm going to have family over, so I can't make any trip whatsoever. Uh, Do you play some games, though? Uh, like, bust out sure. their apples to apples? Maybe, Maybe lure them into a game of Cards Against Humanity after you get everybody drunk, you know? Oh, um, <laughs> Cards Against <laughs> Humanity. No, come you, on, this isn't Christmas time. You don't play Cards Against Humanity with Grandma and Grandpa. They'll hit you. No, you pl I play it with my cousins. No, that's uh, sorry. Because the last time I played Sorry with a group of people, I got hit with a plastic pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, the last time I played Monopoly with my grandparents, I got kicked out of the house. Because I, I bought up my my, all my grandma's property and she called me an asshole. And I'm like, what? Wow. <laughs> wow. No. You, bought, you bought too many properties and no one I'm landed so on them enough. So you spent all your money and you couldn't pay other people's rent. I'm Should've sorry. Should park place, John. Should have no. sold park place. I'm sorry, I was clever enough to buy all the, fir the first couple spaces when you start the game. And my grandma was like, why would you do that, you monster? And I'm like, well, that's how you play the game. Everybody lands on these spots, and when you got to pay a thousand bucks, you got to pay a thousand bucks, lady. Give me your property. Yeah. Give me your money, grandma. Get the hell out of my house. I love you. Get out. <laughs> Get out. Yeah. But grandma, cookies. Fuck you. One of my favorite things, Game Ex at Game Expo, I actually played Cards Against Humanity with um, grandparents. They actually had like the 50, 60 year olds. And oh. they, wow, that was, that was actually a lot of fun because they, they put together references 
that were like, wow, okay, did not see that. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Like it got it got well, dirty. Okay. Well, it got dirty. You managed to use some uh, managed to use some new age words to make old timey racist slurs. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I never knew. How, I didn't know how twerking could be affiliated with the Asians. <laughs> Um, I do not twerk. For the re- for the record, I do not twerk. Um, but yeah, I for, also don't like twerking very much. I don't know, just meh. For extra life, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get a hold of a buddy of mine. Um, we might be playing Left 4 Dead too, maybe. It it, it all depends if he's off from work because he has the setup to stream it on his Twitch. So we might play a couple games of Left 4 Dead before I have to go to work at five. So we'll see. Also, by the by, um, as I said before, I don't have any streaming equipment of which to do this. So what I'm going to be doing is throughout the day, I'm going to be pretty much setting up posts on Facebook with an extra life hashtag. So that way everybody knows I'm participating. Awesome. Yeah, that does it. Yeah. Tweet, Twitter, social media, all that good stuff. Yeah, that's great. Okay, let's go ahead and move on from that. Uh, there'll be more info later on throughout the week as to what we're doing, and when Saturday comes, we'll go ahead and make it publicly known that we're doing this, one thing or another. All right. All right. So, I see we got Halloween recap. Last week was supposed to be our Halloween special, but that turned into, we're going to scare, scare our buddy Los about computers and how bad they are. And they're going to point so, out me it- just trying to down some angry orchard after having given blood. That still wasn't smart, Tori. I was fine. I um, was sleep at a normal hour. You did not look fine after drinking that angry orchard. You looked like you were in pain. I didn't have to go to the hospital. I was fine. Tori! Sweet Christ! Uh, come on, guys. Give it just one beer. Let's <laughs> get one. I, I swear to drunk, I'm not God. So Halloween recap. What did ever? What did you all do during Halloween? I I participated in a haunted house this year. So what you what you dress up as, sir? Um, I put on my old Murphy Pendleton cosplay and decided to go as a crazy fucking mental patient. Oh dear. <laughs> so, so so you on a Tuesday? Yeah, me on a Tuesday. Me on a normal Tuesday at my work spot. Um. The, the greatest thing is, um, well, let's see. The haunted house, um, it was um, our roommate's family who was running it. They were kind enough to let Colleen volunteer this year. Uh, I was the doorman uh, for the haunted house. So that that was pretty fun for me to do. Um, I scared people before they entered into the haunted house, and I almost got ran over by a group of little kids who almost buckled the door from behind me. <laughs> And I made a girl strip, made a girl pretty much, uh, not literally, but from a certain angle, it looked like she shat glitter <laughs> while wait, running out of the haunted she's house. She's a unicorn. Wait, 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 wait. How do you, how do you, who's that going? Okay. So, so, um, what happened was. She pretty much carried this canister of glitter. I thought it was like a thermos of drink, and I said, hey, you can't bring that in there. And she said, oh, no worry, it's glitter. And um, I'm doing my whole little stick, and then the next thing I know, I hear the chainsaw rev, and they just bolt the hell out of the haunted house, and the canister is open, but it's like opened on her right side. So all I see is this stream of glitter from what looks like it's shooting out of her ass. <laughs> it was just... It was just brilliant, man. So uh, I, we um also we also did the haunted house for a good cause. Um, all the money that Angel's family uh, got for this year is actually being all of it. Every single penny is being donated to breast cancer. Oh, that's uh, nice. Breast cancer awareness and research. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, um, I had fun. I had about 115 kids stop by. Um, I was giving out full bars, so apparently word got around. 
Um, had, they came in like waves of, you know, eight or nine spawnlings. Um, not quite a Zerg rush. Um, kind of like, more like tower defense kind of level. Um, managed to rearm myself each time. Had four, had four large pieces of candy done, uh, left when it was all said and done. So that was pretty good. We had just enough. Um, funniest thing that happened is, um, two kids rang the doorbell, hit to one side, and then their plan was when I opened the door, they were going to jump out and go, boo! Except I had a mask on. So they didn't know I had this mask on. So when they jumped out, they saw the mask and suddenly they went, ah! So I ended up surprising them when they were trying to surprise me. Aww. I think that's was, adorable. Yeah, it was cute. It was cute. Had a, had what a was your mask? Elsas. Huh? Ah, uh, you got all the Elsas? I had all the Anas. And I had one Elsa. Were yeah, they young? One, were they young or Anna. were they? Huh? How how young were they? Uh, I tended to be ten or younger. I, I had a few tweens, like the eleven, twelve year olds. Had had only had four teenagers, I think. And the four teenagers were just walking around with their backpacks open, like, and, and just say, "Hey, give us candy." And I'm like, "Fine, jeez, okay, lazy, lazy. Not even costumes on, lazy." But I gave them candy. Um, but we had a lot of Elsas, a lot of Elsas, had a lot of Spider-Mans, uh, Marvel heroes, had, uh, two ninjas, two guys wearing the same costume. Um, let's see. I think they were both reptile from Mortal Kombat, actually. Um, yeah. At, when I was just about to run out of candy, I saw like a reptile and like a scorpion at the house next door. And I was like, shit, I can't, I have no candy for them. So I ran back into the house and I turned off all my lights. I Aww. knew they were just going to fight over it. Aw. Aw. Yeah, I had a lot of Elsas and uh, had a few Star Wars. Did have some Star Wars, which is good. I had, a, had a Han Solo and a not slave Leia. Thank goodness. I had like four Darth Vaders. Cool. Yeah, I had one. I had the Darth Vader. Too. No Jar Jars, thank God. Yeah, I think all the Jar Jar people are, you know, they're gone. Yeah. In hell. But have you seen the theory, though, that Jar Jar was actually the true Sith Lord, or was going to be the true Sith Lord? No. no? Jar Jar ain't shit. Jar Jar is just a puppet politician. Yeah. I wish he had turned out to be more relevant to the plot. He would have been he, less annoying. He yeah. was going to be, but then after everyone hated him in the first one, they cut him out of, like, you know, the second and third one. So he had, like, yeah, one line was, in they, the um, that they wanted him to be a, like a breakout character, but since audiences pretty much wanted him dead, even the actor who played him, he, uh, his role got very diminished within the games. I mean, Jeez. within the movies and the games. <laughs> Jeez, I wonder when you fucking make him sound like an annoying ja- oh, Jamaican man. I wonder what happens. You know, just oh, fuck, fuck, man. It's funny still- you mentioned that, uh, Jonathan, because. A black guy did play Jar Jar Binks. No, well, right. Uh, hey. I don't know. I couldn't stand Jar Jar, and the idea of Jar Jar being an important character makes me kind of feel sad, because I think he could have been a good character had he not had that shitty voice. <laughs> I was kind of yeah. neutral about him. Everyone else just, like, hated him, and I'm just like, well, there's always one absolutely ridiculous idiot, and you just kind of roll with it. Hmm. If you don't like the ridiculous idiot, so what? They're only in like uh, half the scenes. Mm. Uh, Tori, what did you do for Halloween? I was on candy duty and I made this whole little setup in front of my yard. I got six little pumpkins and I painted each Avengers symbol on them. And then I also had two big pumpkins that I carved. Uh, one was the shield pumpkin, a shield jack-o'-lantern, and the other was a hydro jack-o'-lantern. And all the kids loved it. It was so cute. Like, I had one Hulk, but I had two Captain Americas that were girls. And when they saw the little Captain America pumpkin, they just freaked out. Like, one kid was like, oh, cool, it's your shield. 
and the girl's like, my shield! And oh, it was just so precious. And there was another girl, she got all super excited, and she was like, oh, look, it's Captain America, and it's Iron Man, and it's Hulk, and it's Thor, and Black Widow, and I can't remember the last one, the guy with the arrows. Hawkeye. I know. I know it's Hawkeye. She said she couldn't remember. Oh. And so I was like, yeah, it's Hawkeye. Oh, okay, okay. I'm like, oh, Sorry. poor Hawkeye, yeah. <laughs> oh, poor Hawkeye. Who? I made him a little pumpkin, and it was a nice little pumpkin, and people still didn't recognize him. I mean, is he really an Avenger? He is an Avenger. Yeah. He's just okay. not the top tier one. So what else? What else other than painting pumpkins? Oh, and I also watched uh, some scary movies, like, like, I watched, okay, the first one I watched wasn't really scary. It's the silly one. It's Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Oh, that's, that's, that's an really awesome good. movie. It's a really that good movie. such a good movie. Because I'd heard about it before, and it was the idea of, like, oh, the hillbillies are actually decent guys. I'm like, aw, I like decent hillbillies. So I watched it, and it was, I loved it. <laughs> it was so funny. And, yeah, it was ridiculous. The kids are so fucking stupid in that movie, especially the one who runs into a tree and impales himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought the cop was pretty stupid, in all honesty. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, 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 don't touch that. Impales him in the face. Okay, what, other movies did you, what other movies did you see? Um... Well, technically, this one I watched a week ago or two. I watched Goodnight Mommy because it was Halloween season. And that is a really good movie. I, I, I do enjoy it. You still need to see it. Okay, I well. I Because I, I, I have it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. But I kind of like that. And, of course, there is a twist. But I caught on to the twist very early on. But it still didn't detract from, like, enjoying the movie. And basically, I watched a lot of, like, movies that basically deconstruct horror. Like, some of them, the monster isn't who you think it is. Other other times, we know who the real monster is. But basically, there's that dramatic irony in all of them. And then I also watched The Babadook, which is really scary. But at the same time, it's the same kind of horror movie that's, like... What is the monster really? Like, it's more realistic in what the monster is. Yeah, them that the Bubba Duke was really good. It tackled a really interesting issue. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, dealing with grief and being silent about your grief, because that's oh, what will really um, destroy you. Have you have you yeah. seen um, Human Centipede yet? I've seen I've, all three. Uh, Wait, the third one came out. John, yeah, the third one came out. Professor, shame on you for bringing that bringing that movie into this into this discussion. What the first one was hilarious. It's one of the best comedy horrors. I mean, the the scientist's performance is so over the top. It's just, it is hilarious. I I will uh, get second. The second I one was ad- eh. I didn't like. I the do second. admit I do like a good German evil German scientist. I don't care yeah. how overdone it is. I love it every single time. Well, in, in the, the third film. They had the um, the German play as a Texan by the name of Bill Boss, and while the <laughs> first one was hilarious and the second one was mad, this movie, the, the third one was like, "What in the fucking fuck, fuck am I watching?" In the, My, is that in the good way or the bad way? It was kind of in that. It was kind of in that sense as you know the movie's bad, hmm. but it's like it's campy. And it's okay. really hard to make something like this campy, but goddamn, it was so fucking campy. Huh. All right, I need to watch it. I, I've watched the first two. I, I haven't seen the third one yet. Okay. One of my favorite lines in the first movie is um, the, the doctor going, "Oh, this drink, this drink tastes kind of weird. What you put in it? In it, Ruhifnol." And that 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 line just killed me for some reason. I was like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, like wait, wait, wait. You you uh, you you know what you did there. Shame on you. But uh biggest bullshit in that movie, the girls uh, the girls popping a flat and stopping, I'm like, nah, 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 bullshit. Like I, if I know girls and when they drive, they'd keep on driving on that flat for a good another fifty miles so they realize, hey, something's wrong with the car. That's 
That is true. My mom has done that. I've driven with many a girls who have shit, and I've told them, "Hey, something's wrong with your tire." No, that's how my car is. No, your 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 tire is fucked up, sweetie. No, it's 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 fine. It's just a little low. Well, you, call, you called them sweetie. That was your first mistake. Of course, they're not going to listen to you. Well, they 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 were they're, they're friends of mine, close friends of mine. I'd be like, um, you can hear the rim hitting the asphalt. No, that's just the car. <laughs> You know, just, just just making that noise until until we you know we can fucking just have to stop because the car is no longer functioning. But seriously, stop the vehicle. We're going to die. <laughs> Lady, please, your car is on fire. No, it's just the, it's just the warmer. It's just how it's. You, nah. you, you're being ignorant. You're being ignorant. Nah. <laughs> yeah, stop. It's ignorant. Yeah. No, my end for Halloween, I just worked. I worked at a bar. I was dressed as Mario. Luigi, fuck. <laughs> You're <laughs> calling yourself Mario now. I, Even you know you were Mario deep down in your heart. I was, I was traumatized because people unironically were calling me Mario, and I'm like, I'm not fucking Mario. You look I'm like Mario fuck. right now on the video. No, I don't. Yes, you do. You're wearing you, red. You, you shut your mouth, young lady. You miss you. Um, Shouldn't I, you have been Waluigi? Isn't isn't Waluigi cooler than Luigi? I don't care. Yes. Uh, well, we can ask our friends at Box of Props Mario that question. But no, it's because I, I I was I did Luigi a year back for RumsCon with my friend Derek, with my buddy Derek, and one of my coworkers. And we were going to do Mario and Luigi because we had a section outside. We we uh have a section outside when we bar where we bartend. We 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 do the outside bar. But he ended up doing Zorro, and I was Luigi, and I was like, you, you fucking asshole. He goes, oh, it's because I lost the costume. And I go, no, you didn't, because I called your daughter. She says, yeah, she, ha she has it for you in the, in, the, in the house. And he's like, oh, why do you want to be Mario? And I go, I made this costume for you. Go get your costume. And he's like, no. So He's like, no, I'm Zorro. And it didn't help. And he spinned his hat, rode on a horse. Zorro. It didn't help when it didn't help his case when people asked where his horse was, and there was a lady who walked in as, a, as with the horse mask, and he's like, "There's my horse. There's my horse." And I was like, "Oh, oh my goodness." Um, it didn't help also with the time shifting an hour. So we already had drunk drunk Halloween goers at my bar, getting another hour to drink, and I was like, "Oh no, go away, go away." I don't want to serve you alcohol. It's two o'clock. Shit, it's one. Mm -hmm. I didn't have. I didn't have a fun time. I, I was outside in in a costume by myself, bartending, and it was raining. So, yeah, did have a fun time. Oh, let's move on. Uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Anyone see it? I've yet to watch it. I'm probably gonna watch it right after this, though. I didn't get a chance to see it only because I don't have that channel. It's the internet. You can find it anywhere, John. I just like to find it anywhere. I just haven't. Sir, I work two jobs. Sue me. I don't have did a you... lawyer. Did you guys see it? Professor? Tori? Hello? Mm -hmm. Yes. Does anyone... anyone. Does anyone here have stars? Does anyone still use stars? Stars? I don't have stars. Yeah, that's when that's when uh, Ash vs Evil Dead premiered. It's oh right, yeah. I was actually wondering if anyone here had seen it because I don't, I didn't get a chance to see it. Did any of you guys get to see it? Nope. So, nope. Uh, so we put a point. We, oh, never mind. I won't even argue the point. So no, no one out of us saw it. We're proud of ourselves here. Okay. Uh, well, let's go download it illegally. No, wait, no. I didn't say that, robots. I didn't say that. I am a good citizen. Uh, I'll have you note that our 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 editor Ryan put the visual. Oh goodness, the visual antics of this podcast. I am I am the only one on camera, so I don't know what I'm doing that's making this visual. Uh, let's keep on going. Supergirl. Uh, let's talk about that. Yay, Supergirl! Yay, Supergirl pilot. I finally it got was, to watch it. It was garbage. It's okay, like, but John, John, why was it garbage? You don't just get to brush it off this time. 
Um, it's not gonna okay. Give us your thoughts and critique of it. Supergirl. Uh, it's on. Uh, it's gonna. It's on the ABC network, or right? No, it's on the NBC network. NBC, wrong. And one. the ratings are good. So NBC, wrong. I'm getting my networks confused. My bad. Um. Okay. I do not have shit text and everything. No, it, it's because they're trying to make a whole take. Like they're trying to. What I'm getting at is this: when the pilot launched, everything seemed really rushed, and they didn't take the time to actually establish it. And they were like, "My name is Clara, and I'm here to say I'm super." Clara. What? No, the fuck? no L. Whatever the f- no, it's the, they call her Clara Kent or Clara Kent, whatever the fuck in the in the comics. Well, whatever. It's Kara. It's K A R A. It's Kara Danvers. What? Her last name is Danvers. No, she what wasn't, the, a, she no, wasn't she, adopted by the Kents. She's a Kent in the comics, sir. Madam. Well, in the show, her last name is Danvers. Person. Fuck. Either way, it, it, it seems so rushed, and they didn't take the time to. They didn't take the time to actually establish it, and they, it, it just didn't seem like they were genuine about it. I feel it's going to be one of those series they're going to half-ass it and it's going to suck and it's going to get canceled. When um, what channel did um, uh, Supergirl broadcast on? By the way, NB- NBC. Oh wait, hold on, hold on a minute. Did you say NBC? I did. NBC. Yes. Do you have a problem with NBC, Sean? You know the problem I have with it. Oh. Oh, oh it's CBS, actually. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Supergirl's oh. on CBS. That's why I was like, wait, oh. what? Whew. I'm sorry. No, I get the network's computer. I'm sorry. Phew. Damn it, Tori. Oh, I was about to have a conniption fit uh, for a moment. Oh. Yeah, ABC has Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. NBC so has something. Yeah. NBC has rude moderators. And Supergirl's on CBS. Okay. okay. Look at the I'm network. Sorry. Look uh, at the network premiering on do you think they're gonna push the envelope also sean shut up uh do you think they're gonna push the envelope as much for that i think they're gonna try to do an homage to the original supergirl concept which is like can't be up the ass so yeah huh okay so for you it was too campy not well, enough substance think, to it i think that was a lot it was a lot of flack and not enough substance to develop on I see. So, I think it's going to be garbagey, and I think it's going to be. I think the direction they're going to take it is going to be really campy and really just like, "Hey, I'm Supergirl, and I'm sassy, but I can also save the world, and and I can do whatever I want. But you know what? I'm trying to be a normal girl." Duh, 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 duh. Well, yeah. she's done with. For, if you'd actually watched more of it, you'd see she decided I'm not going to be a normal girl anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm going to break out. And yeah. actually, not be normal for once because Bull- she has been normal all this time. Bullshit! Right. They're not gonna have her conflicted and with her not doing like a conflict and like what is like? Can I be Supergirl and can I be myself? Bullshit! They're not gonna take it in that direction because yeah, they might. Every, every super, any Superman story, any character is always at that issue. What is the fine line between being a hero and what is the fine line of being a person? They're bullshit. They're not gonna tackle that because. Yeah. Any given Superman story, there's always a conflict of whether I'm a god or what, how, how, how to not be a god. So bullshit, they're not going to have her do that, even if it's not even late season. Yeah. the uh, I would say, so on the pilot, I do agree that it was rushed. It it felt, they, the, they felt like they had to cram a lot in there. I kind of wish the pilot was two hours. I think more time. The big problem I had with it is a lot of the emotional punches they were going for, um, didn't have time to land because it's like, um, let's see, several of them were, yeah, she felt conflicted of, oh, maybe I'm not good enough. Oh, do I want to be normal? Do I want to save? No, I want to save people. You have the guy who is all, I don't trust aliens. Then he's like, I trust you. Go fight him. Then you have, you know, evil villain. Then you have, you know, I'm going to trust this guy who has a crush on me with my secret identity. Then you, I mean, you, you have a really lot. S- there is there really is a s- lot packed into this one hour. Two hours, I think, would have worked better. Um, 
I did like it though. You have enough to set up a series though. I think they were very desperate to make it clear that, hey, we can make a series out of this. No, really, don't don't pull us. Please pick up our pilot. Look, look at all this stuff. Look at all the cool things. So I think that's what had it. I mean, I like the overarching plot we're gonna have. You know, escapees from the Phantom Zone. She's gonna have to clear mm-hmm. it, clean it up. Why are they going after Superman? Because they hate her mom. So they target her because her mom. Okay, that makes sense. Good move on that. Um, the only thing they really kind of explain is why doesn't Superman come and clean it up? So maybe they need to explain that he's occupied or something like that. I, I would was like thinking to know- he's, I don't know, kind of dealing with Zod right now, maybe. Right? He isn't in the same Superman continuity. Things. I, I would like for Superman. I would like to know which continuity Superman this is. Um, we, I think we know it's not Man is, of um, Steel. It is not Man of Steel, definitely. Yeah. But so I think be... it's in the same continuity as the CW show. No, different continuity. It is not. It cannot be, actually. The, Can, cannot we, be. It, it could be Smallville. It could be Adventures of Lois and Clark. The no, DK. no, it can't be Smallville, because Smallville had its own car, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did it? Mm-hmm. Did it? Yes, it did. did. Oh, I don't remember. Well, then, so it can't be small. It's, small sm- it's not Smallville continuity. It is not D. It is not DC DCU continuity. Nor is it CW continuity. It's its own thing. Yeah. Well, because that's actually pretty nice. Things- is it really though? Because well, yeah, because ever since things had to start connecting, now they're making all these contrived connections, and yeah. some of them don't even match. So you know what? Wait, Let them do their it, own it, thing. It, they could be a little more organized. Way, in what way are things getting contrived and connected? I understand the DCU, things are getting overly, overly connected. How we're trying to get Suicide Squad and everything else fucking connected, but at least CW is making fucking sense. Yeah. Well, yeah, the CW, it works. Yeah, John yeah. Constantine just joined Arrow, so that's going to be awesome. Yeah, See, that, it, that I'm happy about. Yeah, and that no. it, it, makes, awesome. it makes sense of why he would join. He's just like, oh, hello, I'm Constantine. I'm going to hunt the demons. Okay. Hello, I'm a British person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of saw that when they went in a cult direction. It's like, hey, let's save this show. They got canceled for no good reason. Uh, the yeah, I would say, you know, when it was perfectly fine, just fucking keeping it as the show it was. Yeah, I would. Uh, one thing though, they did imply Flash. Uh, the Flash series has established there is a multiverse, so there's yeah. Earth Two. So the Flash TV series. Has, so the they have mentioned that Supergirl may cross over, so it's possible that she could pop through one of these portals into the Flash continuity. Totally okay. possible. Okay, so that's um, what I... They, yeah. They're not in the same universe, Ugh. parallel universe. I just want to know, is this Supergirl series tied to any of the existing Superman franchise? So it can't be Smallville. Can't, I know it's not Man of Steel. They ruled that one out. Lois um, and Clark, no. Yeah, it can't be Lois and Clark? Can't be Lois and Clark. Why? Um, time I get I get I would say the time differences and also how it, how low the Clark ended versus how this one's starting, kind of okay. conflicts. Okay, okay, yeah, I never watched the Lois and Clark one. It always seemed kind of trashy to me. Uh, it was really got, stupid. It was really bad. Okay, that that's what was my impression. Um, so it could be the Christopher Reeve movies. It could be because the Phantom Zone is a thing in the Christopher Reeve um uh, movies. You know, he defeats Zod. But these, they made it clear that this is not Zod. There's a general, but she's not Zod. It's someone else. This is another group. Uh, so it could be the Reeves movies. You know, be hilar- you know what would be or hilarious? It could be, you know, it could be something out of the comics, in all honesty. You know what would be really hilarious? If this crossed over with the Birds of Prey universe? Does anyone remember that series? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that one. So the really bad Birds of Prey series, that, that was a train wreck. I watched that series growing up, and I honestly have to say that the woman who played Harley Quinn on that show would probably be infinitely a lot more better than the Harley Quinn they're going to have for a Suicide Squad movie. Speaking of Harley Quinn... I'm going to give her a chance. I'm going to give her a chance. I'm going to do the same thing, dude, but really, my money is kind of on... Nah, I'm not really sold. Yeah. The the biggest weakness for the Suicide Squad movie is Will Smith as Deadshot. I'm just not feeling that one. I, and you I know, know, and you know, that's like um, Killer Croc. <laughs> Looks like somebody put the actor in a suit and just set him on fire for a fucking hour. <laughs> um, I I won't even talk about Suicide Squad. I've kind of given up hope. Will Smith is my saving grace. Jared Leto, I don't my, know. 
Um, my saving grace, honestly, <laughs> for it is Captain <laughs> Captain Boomerang and Katana characters that are possibly just going to be minor characters. I mean, I just they'll I remember, be dead within ten minutes of the movie start. <laughs> yeah, knowing my luck, because that's how my favorite characters turn out. But hey, I mean, remember, it's it's not politically correct to kill the black man first, but you could totally kill the Asian chick, and no one cares. That's, yeah. All that's I all sad, I do. But I, all I hope from this movie is they play something from Will Smith's rapping career, and if they play Get Jiggy with it, I I will I will love that movie forever. I will lose my <laughs> shit if they throw that in there. They need to do that if they put Deadshot against the Joker in that movie. You know what? You know, here's what I'm really Marley hoping, just... and I'll never get this wish, but I want Deadshot to fucking murder the Joker in this movie, it, and that will make me. They... They won't do it. They won't no. do it. But it'll make me the, the Joker happiest man. for the. This is the Joker for the DC uh, movie universe that's going to be in there. So he can't die because he has to be a major villain for the movie universe. Oh my god! And they released um, the full body photos. Uh, mm. eh, yeah. Without without the tattoos, I think he looked a lot better. But god damn it! He, oh wait, uh, quick little gripe. I'm going to get this out of the way. Uh, hey guys, um, whoever, you know what, I don't even care to learn your name right now, whoever's directing Suicide Squad movie. You said you would stop doing these fucking leaked photo shit and teasers, but here you are doing them again. So, no, not only are you a fucking liar, but you're also a fucking hypocrite, so, good on you. Moving on. Um, <laughs> speak, going back a little bit, Halloween, holy shit, there was a fuck ton of Harley Quinns and Deadpools. I almost lost my shit. That's all I had to say. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, Har- there's a lot of those at every convention, too. So. No, no, no. I'm talking like there was Harley Quinn, the classic one, New 52 Harley Quinn, and fucking trashy Harley Quinn. I was like, oh, my God, where's my bat? I need to kill some people. I need to do something about this. <sighs> yeah. I was at Austin Comic Con over the weekend. There was a really nice classic Harley Quinn. She made the outfit out of latex. So Ooh. skin tight latex uh, Harley Quinn outfit, really well done, very oh, pretty, dear. Mm. shiny. I like, I like how you paid attention to de- detail, John. Shame on you. What skin tight? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> Shame on no. me for what? I I like costumes. Costumes are cool. I'm not very good at doing costumes myself, but I do appreciate good craftsmanship. Nothing, nothing, nothing. We'll continue. I was just trying to shame you a little bit. Um. Okay. Thursdays I have and- no shame, sir. I have none. Yeah. Uh, Thirties and Blues, Once Upon a Time, Arrow, Agents of Shield, and Babylon Five. Uh, yeah, I I noticed this. I, so I have been streaming Once Upon a Time. Uh, I've had a lot of friends, a lot, a lot of friends who are into Once Upon a Time. They love Including Once me. Upon a Time. They've been Including they've me. been telling me, "Hey, go watch Once Upon a Time." Hey, you should watch Once Upon a Time. Hey, you know what show you like? Once Upon a Time. So I finally gave in, finally watching it. It was been on my list for a while. Um, first season, it was okay. Um, it was kind of like Arrow season one. It's like, here's the setup and things like that. Then season two hits. Oh, so good. It's like, yes, Mm -hmm. everything's moving. Everything's great. Everything's funny. Oh, so good. And then season three, I am slogging through season three. It's, ah, I was warned about season three. It's like, yeah. They really dropped the ball. One thing it reminded me of was Arrow Season 3. Uh, like, Once Upon a Time Season 3 is worse than Arrow Season 3, but Arrow Season 3 was not all that great uh, wait, compared wait, wait, wait. to season, season 2. It was a definite it's... drop in quality come Season 3. Was, uh, season, th- was season 3 the one with Rachel, Rachel Ghul? Or Rachel Ghul? Yeah, and I just felt Ra- uh, Roz, uh, yeah, Rachel Ghul was an amazing villain. They just the, the pacing and oh, the payoff. The, the, the story for season three was bad. Yeah. I, they, there was, yeah. I was still trying positive. to think of why it was bad, but season two, the way they did uh, Deathstroke's revenge, the way they built up to it, the way they, they piece it together, um, the way they ended the episodes, it was pitch perfect. They kept a very good pace. With Ray Shal Ghoul, it's. I, I don't know. They were trying. They were trying. They couldn't build the momentum. It didn't. The final payoff didn't feel like a final payoff. It just. Well, if I if I can chime in with about season three, they tried yeah. to do they tried to do a lot with season three, 
how they try to make him the how they try to do the League of Assassins. They try to go more detail about League of Assassins and his role in the league and what is the mm-hmm. future of uh of uh, the fucking city and his his role as uh in the in the community and what's gonna happen to the Arrow and all the other other characters. They try to do a a huge over over expanding story and overarching story in this, but it fell in itself because it was just too complicated. That's that's where I get at. Mm. Like they okay. try to, they try to play it so many games. They try to play it so much for it just to kind of like fall in itself. Okay, in the very I see that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree. I would have loved if they did more on. Oh, what's it called? It was in the comics recently. They just something called the Outsiders War, in which they talk about the different different clans of a. Uh, of uh, in the island, there were several clans, like the Sword Clan, the Shield Clan, the Spear Clan, the Fist Clan. All these, uh, all these people that were in the, on the island, and how his, how he was supposed to be on the island to train to be somehow become the next like uh, leader of the of these, of these Arrow Clan people. And mm. it was a whole, it was a whole, it was a whole story how his father was related, Shadow was related to the story, how all these big, all these big time characters were related to these, uh, to this overarching story. I really wish they did. T- they did took away from the League of Assassins and, and kind of played more as to why he was on the island, or why, like, what was the whole point of the island. But whatever, season three was in be- was okay. Yeah, I mean, it was still watchable. It was still better than s- season one of Shield. Now, Agents of Shield, season one was eh, until the very end. Season two kicked it up. It was that was good. Season that was two- so good. That's the part when I was like, ooh, I have to binge watch it. Before I was just like, okay. Slowly yeah. working my way through Agents of Shield. Yeah, once once you know the twist that they reveal towards the end of season one with the Hydra reveals, that that makes rewatching season one much more enjoyable. Um, that it, that's that, true. So luckily, I'm like, okay, well, season one isn't that bad for me because other people are like, it's boring. Well, it's like, well, I know the secret, and so I'm watching this with different eyes. So it's yeah. it's actually pretty good. And it's good yeah. at like making you like these people as a team, just yeah. making it heartbreaking when they have to split up. Yeah, and season three has kept it up. I really like season three, Agents of Shield. Um, I like I like how they're building towards Secret Warriors. Um, I like what they're doing with Daisy. Everything's going well. It, it's I just, like what they're doing really with good. Daisy. The thing is, their twists are getting kind of predictable. So like. Just like the fan theories that you think, yeah, they're not actually going to do that. The writers are smarter than this, and then they do it. <laughs> yeah, the only the only tendency I've seen, which is kind of predictable, is their break the cutie tendency. So end of season one, we break Fitz. Oh, okay, season three, we're going to break Simmons now. Okay, her turn. And break Go. Fitz again by association. Yeah, a bit. It's like, oh, come on, you know, because Fitz also- Simmons are they're the. I think they're the most popular pairing, probably on the show. Everyone wants Fitzsimmons together. Like mm-hmm. genius scientist people. You should get married, have genius science babies. Yes. <laughs> um, but season three, Age of the Shield has not slumped like Arrow or Once Upon a Time did. They, they're writers. Oh. And they've kept it up. It's good. Babylon 5 is another good example. Babylon 5, the fifth season, was actually their slump. And that, but that was only because they had to take all their content from season five, dump it into season four. Because they knew they were going to get canceled at the end of season four, and then season five happened anyway because someone, you know, TNT picked them up. So that was so that was an interesting contrast. Their season three was again amazing. First season was here's our world. Season two conflict. Season three, oh, big conflict. Now we're expanding. Now we're getting to the you know cosmic, you know, old rivalries here. This is cool. Um, so it, it's interesting that sometimes season threes go well like sometimes not so much and once upon a time in arrow it seems like it was not so much season four i'm gonna give it a shot here i don't know so far arrow season four has not really like eh, grabbed me i don't know although just going back a little bit to uh, agents of shield what you were talking about break the cutie with fits i as much as it did hurt to see fits okay i'm lying it didn't hurt I actually enjoyed seeing Fitz be broken in like a sense that you it was cruel, cruel person. I d- it made him more interesting because it's one thing. It's like, okay, right now he's just the cute, kind of generic, cute, nerdy guy. Oh, but what's this? Up the ante. He's a genius, but he cannot speak in correct sentences. 
because of a brain injury from like you know someone realistically finally because normally on tv shows and such they get knocked out they wake up hours later but they're fine in this show, it's like, no, he, his brain wasn't getting oxygen for several minutes, and that was really bad, and he lost some of his brain function functioning for a while. So I was like, huh, not only is that realistic, but it adds, like, an interesting dynamic that I don't get to see a lot. Like, it made his character more dynamic, and so I love that. I yeah. love when he couldn't talk well. Yeah, the main thing I'm paying attention to is Mockingbird her recovery arc, because we notice she is in Civil War. They've released the promo stills. She's on Captain America's side in the Civil War movie. So Wait, she she's will be, actually going to be in the movie? Yeah, apparently they, they released the pictures of her in, apparently in the movie. Unless unless that's someone else, and I'm just getting getting her mistaken for that someone. That might have been Sharon Carter that you saw. Oh, okay. Darn, that would suck. I want to see Mockingbird with Hawkeye. I know. Uh, Donald uh, Blondes look alike, John. Well, I'm, I'm okay. It all looks alike to me, but okay. Yeah, because I was thinking since I have never seen them bring the TV people into the movies, that would be cool. Like, that's what I expected them to do, but uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah. And, so, and uh, Black Apple 101 wants you to know that Marvel is better than DC. He totally prefers Marvel to DC. Um, so if, if you, if you uh, hate Marvel, he thinks you suck. Uh, he wants to tell you that DC can go to hell. And so all you DC fanboys, send him plenty of hate mail because he hates you. He likes Marvel more. There you go. Uh, Sean, back me up here. We need to talk more. We need to talk DC really quick to, to get rid of this garbage. Uh, we talked I think about Supergirl. Oh, yeah, hey, we did. Hey, hey, and Arrow. Hey, hey I was contrasting Please Arrow on. with Age of Shield. I'm on both sides of this argument. I appreciate Sean. Marvel. I've watched I'm, a little I'm bit gonna, of Age of Shield. <laughs> Sean, I'm going to hit, hit you in your heartstrings right now. We know what we need. What? Blue and gold. We need a TV series. Oh. Yes. No. I agree. No. 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 TV Hold on. series for a movie with Ted with Ted Cord and Booster Gold. That's all we I need. Totally agree. Hold on. Hold, totally agree. Hold on. Hold on. Then for you two, there is good news. Um, I checked through my sources right now, and there is it's it's in the works right now at this moment. Um. There's going to be a Booster Gold and Blue Beetle movie. With uh, was it with, with Nathan Fillion or was it the uh, what, oh my god what's his yes. fucking name? Yes, um, with Nathan Fillion. Who's Nathan Fillion playing? Booster Gold. Gold. Oh my god, that will be the greatest Booster Gold ever. Oh yes. dear. Like um, oh. like I said, it's it's like it's rumor mill stuff right now, so it's still kind of in the talks. Um, that. No, what's, and you know what's cool is that Booster Gold can drop Firefly references because to him, that was part of his archival studies. So Nathan Philly could totally break the fourth wall. And he's hasn't you, hasn't you already? If we get that movie, I will officially say that DC is the better, better company. Just, just, um, yeah, well, yeah you know I mean, they're going to screw it up. I mean, it is a thing. It, you, it, you, you, you be quiet, John. They can't screw this one up. Well, I'm just saying the the editor in chief, like their chief universe builder, has said we have to be grim, dark. We can't have any humor. Humor is bad. And meanwhile, we've got Deadpool and we've got Rocket Raccoon on the other side. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, but Deadpool's Deadpool's overrated, and Ryan can hate me all he wants, but he knows Deadpool is goddamn over. He's overexposed. I'll give you that. He, Deadpool is overused. Yes. Especially, but mainly comics wise. You are, and you know it's wise. True. This is his first <laughs> time getting a movie, so, you know, just, just let them have their movie. You're not so, Jonathan did quietly. I just get muted? Jonathan quietly sat in the corner, put into time out by Ryan, who, who basically made him think about Jimmy Chalmers. Why Deadpool was the greatest. <laughs> What the fuck just happened? Oh. Ryan oh, put shit. Jonathan into the timeout, like any good parent would, when dealing with a spoiled child who does not like the Deadpool. Yes, but um, as I was reading, it was on an article I found on, I think, Comic News or Comic Resources on Facebook. Nathan Fillion has stated that he's wanted to be 
booster gold. That's his dream role right now. That's um, awesome. No, I want to see that. I do. I really do want to see that. Um, yeah. The movie is in development at the moment. They have a director. Everything's in the talks right now. They're just they're doing casting. Um, but if they get Nathan Fillion as Booster Gold, they want to get his buddy to be Blue Beetle. Aww. Wait, the, the guy who was Wash? Yeah, they want him to be Blue Beetle. That, hmm. I don't know if I like him for Ted Cord or not, though. Ted Ted, Ted Cord, hmm. He's a more sciencey uh, Batman kind of figure. He, he's not. He's a he's a thinking man's Batman. Um, though, if you've seen Watchmen with Night Owl, Night, Night Owl is a version of uh, Blue Beetle. Um, so ah, oh yeah, I think I did read about that. He's like right. So like his not, backstory is kind of Batman like, but his personality and everything. Yeah, he's, else. he's lighter and so on. It's just I don't know if the guy who did Wash and Brown Coats are going to yell at me for not being able to remember his name. Because but but okay, but tell me this: Could Blue uh, Beetle get it up? What? Um, Could Blue Beetle that, get it up? Oh, Alan Alan Tudyk. I probably I just can't hear listen. any of you guys. Alan Tudyk, we can hear you. So, Jonathan quietly well, can't, sat in a can't corner. Can't hear you say that we can hear him. Eating eating his curds and whey, sitting on that tuffet that Ryan put him on. As he was slowly re-educated into a good citizen. Hmm. Okay. Uh, this is where and, I read this. Okay. Oh, and meanwhile, Godzilla came in and was going to blow everything up. Um, today's Godzilla's birthday. Woo! Happy birthday. You don't look a day over 30. You're yep. still thriving. Yay. Uh, how many times has he blown up Tokyo now? Um, oh, did you guys hear? They are developing in other news. There's a King Kong movie in development right now, and they are going to do Godzilla versus King Kong. That's going to be a thing. The, they're going to have a united monster universe uh, with Godzilla, King Kong, Ghidorah, Rodan, Mothra, all these guys in the same universe. Um, the rumor is they want to throw Pacific Rim in there because, oh my God, we need that, but probably not going to happen. True. Although, I don't know, because I, I feel like Pacific Rim is just kind of its own thing. Yeah. Like, it's more of a... I don't, okay, no. The opposite of deconstruction, the reconstruction, where it's like, yeah, we're changing things, but it's still fun and positive. So, yeah, so they kind of stick to their own thing. Yeah. With their with their always sunny in Philadelphia scientist and their Torchwood scientist. Yeah. So let's see. Oh, uh, next item, uh, real quick. Steven Universe fandom is the worst fandom. The creators have said so. Therefore, it is. When your fandom drives an artist to try to commit suicide, you are the worst fandom. Goodbye. Um, you're that that's that's the end there. So PSA: Don't be a Steven Universe fandom because they are the worst. Um, also. Jonathan has admitted that he has terrible taste in voice actors uh, because he does not like Todd Habercorn. Todd Habercorn is awesome. The Communicast would like to say that the Todd Habercorn is the best voice American voice actor, and we love him, especially Jonathan. Uh, and yes, any other closing notes? I guess so. I am slowly morphing into Jonathan. I guess at this point, I don't know. You're the new John. Yeah, John. So, so the robots, in case you're wondering, the robots have kidnapped Black Napa 101. He has been taken to a re-education camp. Um, so next week, he will be a good citizen and not say things like he think he doesn't like Deadpool. And, you know, he'll say things like Marvel is the greatest. And he'll say things like Todd Habercorn is an amazing voice actor who I love and respect and admire. And I wish I was him. And I am, you know, just so jealous of his success. Anyway. Though I am... Like Though and I like, am, comment, subscribe if you want him yeah. back. Yeah. So I so am like, comment, and subscribe at the and um. And although I am amused at the antics, if we could have the robot overlord free him from his confines for a few moments, so that way we can uh. 
Okay. Yeah. The robot the, overlord has said no, and so um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, there. That's the problem with technology. It sometimes bites you on the butt. Although it's not the robot's fault. It's totally him. It's totally human error. No, really. Yes. Um, Tori, Sean, give give us an outro here, and I'll, I'll I guess I'll close it out. Always spay and neuter your pets before it's too late, because it's been six months if you've been keeping up with us, which means that my dog has gone into heating again, and now I'm gonna have to deal with that. So please spay and neuter your pets. Um. Um. Although I'm not a big fan of Supergirl, I do have to say, um, when they made her a Red Lantern in the comics, that was um, it. That was pretty cool. I like that. I thought that was neat. Yeah. I hmm. need to read more comics again. I'm behind yeah. a lot. I stopped reading a lot of comics after one more day. Joe Joe Quesada killed a lot of my Marvel readership with one more day. Don't uh, worry, New 52 killed a lot of readership for a lot of people who read DC. Yeah, and now I, I, everyone is flocking to Image. Yeah, but mm. Image, they, they gave us Youngblood's disease. Uh, I don't know. Linkara reference. Um, yeah, anyway. Yeah. So, I guess I'll close this out. I unfortunately didn't have a dramatic narration. Um, there we go. So as the Communicast draws to a close on its first episode, you know, Black Nappa 101 gazed out upon the horizon, then got promptly whacked in the back side of the head and knocked out, hence why he's so quiet. But that's okay, because we will be back another week to triumph over the evil Queen Jessica, whose power will never, whose power will never succeed in conquering the internet. Now, and so join us this weekend at Wonko's in Austin for Extra Life. Play my game, Ice Brass Revolution. Um, I may or may not be alive next week when Jonathan hunts me down and kills me for taking his spot. I don't know. This is funny. Uh, go go uh, watch uh, Silver go Fist's and smell Twitch the roses. feed. Yes, Silver Fist will be playing Pathfinder and Ark for Extra Life. I don't think you got to mention that. Um, so yes, Ice Brass Revolution, AES, BrassRevolution.com. Um, you can also find us on Facebook at AES Brass and Twitter, AES Brass. And Don da Don 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 The time is 3.30.